I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it felt different the two nights that I did this. So the first night, um, it, the, the first night I felt like there was definitely a learning curve, and at first I was just um, aware of trying not to fail. Like, you know, am I actually going to have, do I have brain waves? Is something going to register? Am I going to be able to do this? Um, and, but then, like, as, as soon as it started to kind of respond, as soon as there was some interaction, then it became this sort of really cool game of, of going, okay, so it's responding, what's it responding to? And fairly quickly, I developed the idea of, um, it, it felt, the first time it felt like a more meditative experience, and I realized I just focused on my breathing, and the more I focused on my breathing, the more it responded, and the more I could lengthen out the notes, and that was really cool. It was, uh, it was interesting to try and track my own process and figure out what was having the effects on, on the machine. So I, you, you try a couple of different things and you see how it responds and uh, my initial instinct was to go for meditation and attempt to really focus on my breathing and uh, I found that, that that was effective sometimes but also then if I stuttered at all and if, if the, the machine started to speed up and the sound started to speed up, that that would distract me and um, and then that would kind of get my mind like fluttering a bunch again. So I found eventually what one of the, if I were gonna try it again, I think one of the most effective approaches was to really listen to each pitch and try to imagine myself physically reaching and then pulling and lengthening out the pitches. And toward the end, that I had some luck with that approach. So. One of the things I really liked when I was first engaging with it the first time around that helped me kind of get into it and slow down a little was just the, um, the actual visual pattern and just kind of, you know, watching that and looking at it, I found it really peaceful and relaxing and, you know, the sort of architectural quality of it helped me kind of relax into a space where I felt like I could engage with it. So it was like, for me, it was the visual first that helped me kind of ease in and then the sound became this whole thing that I engaged with. I mean, it's, it's peaceful in that I'm meditating, but it's also really um, frustrating too. And so I think that adds an interesting kind of emotional dynamic to it. Um, so for when, you know, when I, when I start doing it, I have to, you know, I'm thinking about meditating, which is this, idea that you're sitting and emptying your thoughts and you know it's a very internal experience um, but the, the fact that I'm, I'm in this kind of a situation I have to negotiate with the side of me that has this objective to to affect this thing that's outside of myself and so for me actually I think um, it was easier when I could block this whole thing out to mm -hmm. get the sound to to um, elongate um, and so it's, it's kind of a, a, a little battle, I feel, that I was, I was going through. Yeah, there's a performative aspect to it, mm -hmm. which also complicates the whole, you know, made the meditation thing mm -hmm. as more of a struggle. I think there's something, there's an anxiety about being hooked up to something, you know, that's reading your brain, reading and, and almost making something, making something internal that nobody else should know, like, visible. I mean, it's just really interesting about the idea of being able to know that something's shifting in someone else, you know, I mean, mentally or internally somehow. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, you, the first time that you notice the, the sound change, you know, I feel like, oh, that person just changed somehow or something changed in that person. And so I don't know, I thought that was kind of neat. Another new technology that I was excited to try out and use in this piece for the first time uh, hails from London, England and a company called Bear Conductive and they're making conductive paint which uh, is literally what it sounds like. It's paint that conducts electricity. Uh, as in the other pieces in this series, I'm interested in uh, creating the visual image of the work out of only the elements that are essential to the sound producing 
uh, circuitry. So in other words, there's no decorative elements here. Everything that you see that creates the visual aesthetic is also serving a purpose in the circuit. So what this paint allowed me to do was to uh, maintain this kind of dual nature of all the materials, but actually add uh, paint into the, the circuit and the visual. Uh, a little bit about how the uh, paint is functioning in the circuit without getting too technical. Uh, for each pitch, which comprises the sequence of sounds, there's one strip of paint down on the wall. Uh, and here, where they all come together, I apply at one end of the strip of paint the highest level of positive voltage. And at the other end of the line of paint, this one comes around and ends here, uh, I tap out of the line at the ground end of the circuit, the negative end, the lowest level of voltage. And to create the different pitches, somewhere along this line, in, in between, I uh, grab a voltage that exists between the highest and the lowest state. And depending on where I tap out of the line, I can get different pitches, which comprise the, uh, the sequence of sounds. I was excited to use this stuff for the first time, just to figure out how it worked, and uh, I think there's a lot of potential. Really excited about future projects, uh, including bare conductive paint.